There are 22 fusion rifles available as we head into Destiny 2 Lightfall, and I set out to rank every single one of them. Not only is this a tier list, but I'm gonna actually go through and rank every fusion rifle from number 22 all the way to the top number one fusion rifle in the game. So you'll be able to see my complete thoughts about each one compared to the rest. For a while, it felt like every sandbox update massively changed the way each fusion archetype worked, and the perks fusion rifles relied on were constantly being adjusted as well. But after several seasons of things staying relatively the same after the Witch Queen expansion, it seems like Bungie is pretty satisfied with where the different fusion rifle frames have landed in Destiny 2. There are some exceptions like main ingredient continuing to require changes, and whispers of rapid fire fusions potentially seeing slight improvements soon, but for the most part it feels like a great time to compare tier lists and even rank each one of them as we head into Lightfall. Some ground rules for ranking these. First, I will put the disclaimer that every player is different. There are infinite possibilities of play styles, input devices, frame rates, field of view settings, and even ADS sensitivity variables that will change how effective a fusion rifle is for you. And while I'll be judging these fusion rifles based on their ease of use for bolts connecting, the distance which they can reliably one burst, and the speed at which they can do all this, Ultimately, their ranking will be determined through my own experience and success after using god rolls of every one of them. And I feel like I've got a good eye for this. Back in Season 15, I became the number one rumble player in the world using a fusion rifle hardly anyone was paying attention to. So, hi there, I'm Legolith Flash, and I'm your ultimate guide to the best fusion rifles in Destiny 2. Now, starting in alphabetical order, the Arvindil FR6 High Impact Stasis Fusion Rifle. We're starting incredibly basic here with this world drop fusion rifle that can be obtained at random from pretty much any activity. It's a more recent addition from Season of the Seraph, but they really didn't load it with any attention grabbing perks. It's a tough sell when you compare it to the rest. High impact fusion rifles shoot 5 bolts a burst and can eliminate nearly any opponent with only 3 of those bolts. The exception being if your opponent runs 10 resil, you'll need 4 bolts to hit, but overall they are the easiest archetype to kill with if you get past the charge time. High impacts have a 960 millisecond charge time, and by the time the bolts connect, you're at a 1.06 second time to kill. That is slow for the Crucible, with even most unlimited ammo primary weapons hitting below the 1 second time to kill line. Now, you can get good at pre-charging, and in quick play and low pressure environments that's fine, but once you're playing against a coordinated team in Trials of Osiris or competitive or even skilled players with good reaction and movement abilities, you're going to want something faster. So I look for two things on high impacts. Is the charge time worth it for the range it gets, or is there a perk that helps with the charge time problems? The answer on Arvindil is no to both of these questions. At completely maxed out range, you're still starting damage fall off at around 17 meters due to a standard 15 zoom and no range perks. We're going to get to some fusions that can hit much further than that and at much faster speeds. Speaking of speeds, there are no perks that help with that either. That said, there are two interesting things I found with this fusion rifle. Slapping firmly planted in some range on Arvindil made it very stable for a high impact fusion rifle. You'll see this about me later, but I am not a stability guy. I love me some range on a fusion rifle, but with just chambered compensator for some extra stability and recoil control and firmly planted to help control the bolts even further, this heavy hitter becomes a laser beam. It really surprised me with just how easy it was to hit my shots with this combo. You can take it even further running a void subclass with elemental capacitor in the fourth slot for the extra plus 20 stability. Not very many fusion rifles have that stability perk combo. The other thing that's interesting is that this is the only current high impact fusion rifle to get swashbuckler, which can give you a 33.3% damage buff on a melee kill. Glacioclasm used to get it, but it's not in the perk pool for it anymore. This is of note because with a solar subclass, you can run a liquid coil swashbuckler Arvindil to instantly get 99 damage bolts with just a melee kill by stacking swashbuckler times 5 and radiant. That's a 2 bolt kill up to 8 resil. I never got that exact roll, but I played around with something similar on an old Glacio and the results were pretty hilarious. Even doing 49 damage a bolt outside of the fusion range cap. Now that's fun, but it's a quick play gimmick that won't win you any competitive matches. So are the laser beam shots with stability and firmly planted enough to make this one noteworthy? 
I'm going to sadly say no and place the Arvindel FR6 in the B for boring category. You can find success with it, but it does literally nothing special. I'd go as far as saying I'd recommend any other high impact fusion rifle over this one, and I'm placing it at number 18 out of the 21 fusion rifles currently available. If you're new to the game and you're not playing in high skill brackets, hold on to a firmly planted roll. Outside of that, it's time to clear your vaults of any Arvindel you've got. Okay, on to something much, much different. I can't I can't believe we're going to such polar ends of the scale here. The Burden of Guilt Adaptive Stasis Fusion Rifle from Trials of Osiris. I'm going to be straight up with y'all on this one and show my hand right off the bat here. Those who follow me know at least a piece of what I'm going to say. This has been one of my favorite fusion rifles in the entire game. Now, if you're sitting there in disbelief from the words coming out of my mouth right now, you're not alone. Even Fallout Plays DM'd me and was like, are you all right, man? And I don't blame anyone for having those doubts. Oh, and Fallout also said the show this. So there you have it. Fallout Plays himself told you to like and subscribe, so I don't have to. We're going to come back to the rest of his message in a second, but ignore ig ignore that other part. Thank you, Fallout. Anyways, you're not alone if you don't feel like Burden of Guilt was it for you. When it was first introduced, nearly every review I saw dumped on this Trials of Osiris fusion. I believe a large part of that was due to the assumption that stability was key to make fusion rifles great, and that combined with the ability to reach 100 stability on this fusion created the perfect storm. Everyone got the roll went to try it out, and couldn't hit a thing. In my original review, I called it the Swiss Army Knife of Fusion Rifles. It can get 100 stability, and it can be the fastest fusion rifle in the game by stacking all charge time perks with an adept charge time mod and stacking all of that on successful warm-up. It can even get to 100 handling, but the absolute best way to run it in my experience has been ditching stability completely and going all in on range and aim assist. There is something magical that happens when you push the range and stack on some aim assist mods. It becomes relentlessly consistent at shocking distances. Look at how the bolts connect when they have no right to. The damage fall off is just at the very end of some of these clips and the aim assist is like, nah, it's cool, we'll, we'll connect the bolts for you. Plus, this is an adaptive frame which fires at a fast 660 milliseconds compared to precision frames like Main Ingredient that have a 780 millisecond charge time. Oh, and the stat everyone cares about means nothing to me on the burden of guilt. I've gone as far as running my stability down to 27 with the Adept targeting mod and it feels great. It's my go-to setup. I run 64 range with Killing Wind and high impact reserves and then extended barrel for the slight bump in recoil direction. Adaptive frames at base need six bolts to kill higher resilience guardians, but high impact reserves keeps my bolts killing almost all higher resil levels with only five bolts. It also helps with damage fall off letting me get six or seven bolt kills past the damage fall off if I land all the bolts at further <laughs> ranges. Then when Killing Wind and Alacrity are both active, I'm boosted up to 94 range and 87 aim assist once I add in the fusion targeting mods. That is just unbelievable. I cannot recommend this fusion rifle enough. Even the non-adept, you are not missing out on anything but five extra aim assist with my favorite way to run it that I described above. It even has elemental capacitor in the third column if you're not a fan of killing win and would rather give one of your stats a boost from the get-go. But you really don't need a lot other than the range and aim assist to make this fusion feel fantastic. Over and over again, I come back to Burden of Guilt, and I'm going to put it at the very top in the S tier, and I rank it number two out of all 22 fusion rifles currently available in Destiny 2. Wait, number two? That's right, there is another. Okay, really fast, I wanna circle back to what Fallout said, because it is actually very important for some ranking stuff here. I play on low sensitivity with my controller, and if you're on mouse and keyboard or play at high sensitivity on controller, you may not get the benefit that I do out of the range and aim assist stats. I won't say this about every fusion rifle, but no, for Burden of Guilt in particular, input methods and device could determine a lot for you. Okay, on to another banger. The Cartesian Coordinate Rapid Fire Solar Fusion Rifle. Standing amidst a sea of poor aim assist rapid fire fusion stands the Cartesian Coordinate. Seriously, if you're looking at the Destiny Massive Breakdown spreadsheet where you can view all the weapon stats at the same time, the Cartesian stands out as clear as day with its 60 aim assist. Every other rapid fire fusion is in the 30s. That's insane! And on top of all this, it has scopes that can hit 17 zoom while most other fusions are stuck at the standard 15. Combine all these stats with some range, stability, and a cracked fusion perk like Under Pressure and you're ready to rock and roll. 
Now, getting a hold of Cartesian is another story. As with all fusion rifles on this list, you can still get it, but it is only through sheer luck if Zur happens to sell it, which Bungie devs confirmed is pure RNG. Even if Zur does sell one, as he did a few times this past year, it may not be the best roll. Under pressure and a 17 zoom scope are really what make this thing stand out, so if you never got one, be on the lookout. I'll absolutely shout out here on the channel when I see it. Now, why would I shout out this fusion in particular? Back in season 15, this was the fusion rifle that I used to become the number one rumble player in the world. Rapid fires had just been buffed to nine bolts in a burst, but it only took seven of those bolts to get a kill at any resilience level. I didn't even have a god roll, no high impact reserves for extra damage. I just had a little bit of stability and a little bit of range combined with under pressure. So while everyone was taking 740 milliseconds to charge their main ingredients, I was melting them at nearly the same range with a lightning fast 460 millisecond charge time. But that was then, and this is now. So, how does it hold up today? All fusions got a significant range nerf after Witch Queen, a stability nerf, and a specific nerf to rapid fire frames to reel them in a bit. Now you need 8 out of your 9 bolts to eliminate guardians at 6 Rizil are up, yikes, and rapids charge slightly slower with a 500 millisecond charge time, so less range, less damage, and a slower charge rate. But even with all those changes, Cartesian is an absolute beast. Now it's not the monster it was due to the range nerfs, it just doesn't have the stats or perks to help it reach those 20 meter kills, but just because it can't map that far doesn't make it bad. It can still hit 15 meters with speed and aim assist like no other. I'll often connect all 9 bolts at 16 meters thanks to the 17 zoom and under pressure working together, making it not as big of a deal that I don't have a god roll with high impact reserves. But if you've got a roll with high impact reserves and liquid coils, you can fire just slightly slower and act like the damage nerf never even happened, still 7 bolting guardians in most circumstances. Even in today's sandbox, Cartesian coordinate excels in smaller maps against SMGs, sidearms, shotgun players, and other fusion rifles. I'd go as far as calling it the anti-fusion fusion. Any rapid fire frame fusion could take this title due to their speed, but thanks to its 17 zoom, high aim assist, and under pressure, Cartesian coordinate leads the pack in the speed fusion category. It's just so much more reliable than the other rapid fire fusions, and I'm putting it in the S tier category for its continued performance in fast paced smaller settings. Overall, I'm only ranking it number 6 out of all 22 fusion rifles currently available, it just can't compete at further distances and it faces a harder counter against good slug shotgun users that can insta-kill you within 10 of your 15 meters, but that range is the only thing holding Cartesian down. Number 6. If we see even a slight bump to rapid fire fusions, I think we could see Cartesian make a run for number 1 again. Coriolis Force, the only aggressive frame horizontal burst fusion rifle. This void fusion obtained from the Varix bounties on Europa is one of a kind, and by one of a kind, I mean one of a kind of fusion rifle you will never see again. Bungie themselves called this archetype a failed experiment, and by firing it just a single time, you will know why. It is the one fusion rifle in Destiny 2 that you cannot manually control the recoil of. The bolts are just gonna do what they do and flare out in their horizontal pattern, creating a frustrating and inconsistent user experience that has caused most veteran players to delete every Coriolis force to dare appear in their inventory. Now the bolts are pretty strong and fly out at the 660 millisecond charge time of an adaptive fusion rifle, but it almost doesn't even matter how much damage you're doing or what the charge time is because the rifle itself is so unreliable. Even with a ton of time invested in learning the gun, a rangefinder roll, which is an absolutely broken perk on other fusion rifles, plus a really good understanding of how fusion rifles operate, I could not achieve consistent success with this weapon. I can't say that about any other fusion rifle on this list. Let's just be real here for a second. You can make any fusion rifle work. You can learn the charge time, you can learn the optimal engagement range and adapt to your playstyle to fit it. Not with this fusion. I swear, sometimes the bolts felt like they just disappeared from the game. Like I would watch them go through an opponent without doing any damage. The one single thing I will say about Coriolis Force is that it looks and sounds cool. The design team did a fantastic job making it feel like you are firing a nail gun when you pull the trigger. I love it. 
and it fits the extra damage that the bolts do for its speed. But it also makes it that much more disappointing when you're faced with the reality that these bolts will never go where you want them to. So I'm putting Coriolis Force in the D for dead category, dead because Bungie themselves said it was a lost cause, and I agree with them. I'm placing it at the very bottom, number 22 out of all 22 fusion rivals currently available. It would be cool if they gave it the lightweight frame intrinsic movement to close the gap or let the gun fire the bolts left to right so that you could swipe to control the recoil, just anything to help give it a niche or way to master it, but I'm also okay with them never touching it again. Four fusion rifle frames is enough, and the more we crowd this space, the more difficult it becomes for there to be a reason to run one type over the other. The Deliverance Precision Frame Stasis Fusion Rifle from Witch Queen's Vow of the Disciple Raid, our first precision frame fusion rifle on the list, and chronologically, the first stasis fusion rifle to come to Destiny 2. Precision frames are the current staple of fusion rifles. They're what most people think of when they comment on the status of fusion rifles in the Crucible. If you're picking up a fusion for the first time, precisions are where you want to start. But it's also where many veteran players end up staying because of their ease of use and consistency. They're consistent because they deal just enough damage to only need 5 of their 7 bolts to connect against any resilience level opponent. And they're easy to use because of their high base stats, high zoom values, generally great perk selection, and their intrinsic trait. A lot of people overlook that last part. Precision frames intrinsically have their recoil pattern set to be more vertical. This was nerfed recently, thanks main ingredient, to have that intrinsic precision perk not give as much of a benefit, but I do still find it to be very, very good. I mentioned the high stats precision frames have, and Deliverance has, wait, the highest base stat of all? 62 range, 52 stability, 67 aim assist, and 80 recoil direction are all the highest stats of any precision fusion rifle currently available in Destiny 2. You can feel this when you shoot any roll you have on Deliverance. It just feels like a laser right out of the gate, making it a really easy fusion rifle to use for any player. That said, all precision frame fusion rifles are really easy to use. It has 16 zoom, which while above the standard 15, actually falls a little flat compared to the rest of the precision frame options, so that part is a little disappointing. That disappointment continues when you realize Deliverance doesn't have very many perk options to enhance its accuracy, like most other precision frames have. Firmly planted and under pressure are nowhere to be seen. Tap the trigger is here, but it's my least favorite of the three accuracy perks, and it's tied up in the fourth column where another amazing perk is, successful warm-up. Now, this is where Deliverance can shine and do something many other fusion rifles can't. Once successful warm-up is going, it lets precision frames fire in only 488 milliseconds. That's faster than a rapid-fire fusion rifle. Successful warm-up can roll on all archetypes now, but it's special on precision frames because of the consistency precisions have with their 5 bolts. Other frames, primarily rapids and adaptives, are going to sacrifice consistency to use successful warm-up because they would be better off with high impact reserves in that column. Deliverance takes this consistency and speed a step further by offering an Adept version. The Adept version lets you put on the Adept charge time mod, increasing your speed without taking away any damage. It's the one spot having an Adept version is majorly beneficial over a crafted version. Successful warm up with the Adept charge time mod brings your charge time to a speedy 461 milliseconds while maintaining your 5 bolt kill at any resilience level. That alone shoots this thing up to the top of the fusion rifle rankings. Now, you can also craft deliverance, and that comes with its own small bonus. Crafting enhanced successful warm up lets you add 5 seconds to the perk timer for kills after your first one, rather than the usual 4 seconds. One second may not seem like a long time, but it can be make or break on a streak you have lined up once you get some ammo. Okay, now for the big question. Are the two unique things with successful warm up on the adept or crafted version enough to push this fusion to the top? I think the answer for this is going to be extremely preferential. There is no doubt it is a solid fusion rifle, and I bet mouse and keyboard players are going to have a good time with how stable it feels in any scenario but I'm going to have to place it in the A for average fusion rifle category. Despite comment after comment of followers asking me to review Deliverance, I just don't have a lot to recommend or say about it other than the combos I listed. You can find success with it, and I don't think it will disappoint in lower skill brackets, but I never feel like I am performing better because of it. I'd go as far as saying I actually lose more fights than I would have won if I used something else. Even if you're looking to just fill your kinetic slot with a fusion option, I would go for the non-adept burden of guilt over this. 
And so I placed Deliverance number 12 out of all 22 fusion rifles. Dreambreaker, the adaptive solar fusion rifle from the Moon Bounties. Oh man, what a waste. I'm so sorry to anyone who loves this fusion rifle. I, I know you're out there, but the stats speak for themselves. The lowest range, lowest stability, lowest handling, and the lowest aim assist on any adaptive fusion rifle available. Why? There's so much potential, it hurts Bungie. Adaptive fusion rifles are in such a good spot right now with the speed at which they can slay out and the perk pull on Dreambreaker is amazing with combos like under pressure and high impact reserves, firmly planted in kickstart, even under pressure and eye of the storm which makes you pinpoint accurate if you get shot at. But it is just too unsalvageable to become top tier. They even took away perks like rangefinder and tap the trigger when the moon weapons were revamped. So you can't get the double accuracy drop of firmly planted and tap the trigger or the incredible rangefinder and high impact reserves combo. I'm gonna be real, if I could get rangefinder and high impact reserves on an adaptive fusion rifle, I would have dealt with the stats. That would put it past high zoom precision range territory with only 5 bolts to kill at any Brazil with the speeds of an adaptive. Bungie, give it to me! But no, we are left with this low stat adaptive that has one thing going for it. The only adaptive frame to have kickstart. It's a limited playstyle, but if you're a running gun, slippy slidey guardian, this creates a really interesting playstyle for you. Kickstart bumps your speed and damage so you're back down to only 5 bolt kills like a precision frame and your speed is boosted to a 528 millisecond charge time. That 20% damage buff from kickstart is so much that you can even run accelerated coils and a charge time masterwork and fire it with a 464 millisecond charge time while maintaining your 5 bolt kill at any Brazil. That's faster than the speed of a rapid fire and more damage than a precision on demand. No kill needed, you just slide and do it. Plus, you can roll firmly planted and kickstart at the same time for the extra accuracy. Also, it's solar, so it's great paired with Path of Burning Steps on a Titan to give you an extra 15% buff that stacks on kickstart, creating a potential 4 bolt kill? That's a cracked roll. I've, I have it, I know. I've used it, but it's so niche and the range is so limited by the base stats that it cannot compete with the competition. All too often, the bolts will not go where you want them to, and they definitely won't reach the range you're used to seeing on other fusion rifles. So I'm placing Dreambreaker at the very bottom of B for boring category and giving it an overall ranking of number 15 out of all 22 fusion rifles currently available. You won't find me pulling this one out unless it's for something very specific. On to one of the most powerful and overlooked fusion rifles in the game the Epicurean. With the right setup, it is the number one fusion rifle I'd recommend to people who aren't fusion rifle mains but are wanting to up their fusion rifle game. It is unbelievably consistent at ranges that will leave your jaw on the floor. The amount of times I'm going, uh, what? After getting a kill is unreal. So why isn't this one all over the top fusion charts? The Epicurean. A reprise void precision frame fusion rifle that returned to Destiny 2 with the introduction of the duality dungeon. It came back very low key as the red border drops in the dungeon were hard to get at launch and there weren't any standout accuracy perks on the gun. They literally stripped under pressure and tapped the trigger off of the perk pull which was available on the old version of the fusion. It also has the lowest zoom value of any precision frame fusion rifle so to most on paper there was no reason to farm this thing. So why does this one feel so amazing? What is connecting these bolts at such insane distances? Rangefinder. This is the first fusion rifle on the list to have rangefinder, and so we're going to give a brief summary on that because it changes everything. Fusion rifle zoom is really weird. Zoom gives a weapon more magnification, which is what gives you all the extra range, aim assist fall off distance, and damage fall off distance that people think when they think of more zoom. But on fusion rifles, zoom doesn't increase magnification as much as it does on other weapons. So TLDR, zoom helps fusions, but not as much as it helps other guns. Rangefinder breaks that and gives you 10% more magnification, the thing that actually matters, not just 10% more zoom stat. If you want the full math breakdown, go check out the Rangefinder nerf video I did, but to keep it simple, I'm going to just tell you that Rangefinder on Epicurean gives you the equivalent of 21.5 zoom. We just blew past every fusion rifle zoom stat that exists with one perk. Rangefinder, and you can clearly see how it puts in the work in these clips. 
there are only three fusion rifles out there out of all 22 currently available that have rangefinder. And unless there is something terribly wrong with them, they will each make it to the S tier category, no problem. Epicurean is absolutely in the S tier. Even with no other accuracy perks, going with a bit of stability and range on Epicurean allows you to land your bolts like no other. I frequently use the term sticky to describe a fusion rifle that feels good, but it's more than that. With surplus or snapshot, it feels fluid swapping between weapons scoping in and connecting your bolts. I've got message after message of guardians thanking me for bringing this fusion to their attention. It's truly unlike any other out there with the distance, handling, and ease of use it maintains, and I'm ranking it number 4 out of all 22 fusion rifles. Go get those red borders and see for yourself. One quick tip for it, despite being a precision frame that has recoil that tends more vertically, I do use a counterbalance mod on this weapon. Something about it just feels right on this weapon, but it will be a complete preference on what works best for you. The Donning Events Glacioclasm. Okay, this one's bending the list a little bit because it's only available a certain time of the year, but this void high impact fusion rifle continues to keep coming back year after year. So I'm gonna include it as I see no signs of it slowing down. Glacioclasm is tough to judge because you may feel different about it depending on what version you have. It's not that the stats have changed over the years, but the perks have, and some that I find essential on the weapon can no longer drop. Backup plan being the main one that stands out to me. Now, don't laugh, I know backup plan can be a bit of a joke these days with how it lowers your damage for the faster charge time, but on high impacts, it makes a lot of sense. Trust me, we'll go over that in a little bit as it no longer rolls on Glacioclasm. But what does now drop on Glacioclasm is one of the strongest distance fusion perks we've ever seen, Offhand Strike. As we head into Lightfall, Offhand Strike is only available on 10 weapons in the game. I admit, just like everyone else, I completely overlooked this perk when I first went over Glacioclasm. No one really understood what it did until the donning event was over, and so I guarantee that going into this year's event, it will be a number one pick on everyone's wish list. Community testing shows that offhand strike gives 1.45 times damage fall off start and in distance, plus 30 stability, and brings your accuracy cone and accuracy cone growth to the size of a needle. This activates whenever you get a kill and stays active for seven seconds. That is a super long time in the Crucible, and just so happens to be the same length of time as Golden Trigon Times 1's 15% damage boost, so I really lucked out having both of these drop together. What's crazy is that Glacioclasm is already kind of cracked even without offhand strike. It has the highest range and stability out of any other high impact fusion rifle currently available. It even has 16 zoom over the standard 15, and its only weakness appears to be its aim assist stat and the low charge time that comes with high impacts. It also has other interesting roles like slide shot kickstart for the more aggressive player and under pressure eye of the storm for the more passive player. So how do all the options line up compared to the other fusion rifles available? While the range stat is super high, it actually isn't going to map until you get offhand strike rolling. But it also struggles to get offhand strike proc'd in competitive settings due to the long charge time required. So it doesn't do anything the best, but it's clear there's a lot to love, and I'm placing Glacioclasm near the very top of the A category. I feel like this is when I'm going to start upsetting people, as it's a really good fusion rifle, but in a competitive setting with high mobility players and primary weapon players hitting their optimal time to kills around 0 0.6 to 0.7 seconds, you just aren't going to get off your near 1 second charge time. Can it happen? Sure. Can you get good with pre-charge and play against players who don't know how to read it? Sure. But I believe there are better competitive fusion rifles for the higher skill brackets. So we're still rating this one really high at number 8 out of all 22 fusion rifles currently available. Hollow Words, the precision frame arc fusion rifle that I believe is a big sleeper weapon. When I say people are sleeping on this, I'm talking about myself as well. I went several seasons without paying this fusion much attention, and I blame that almost entirely on the crap rolls I was given. Then out of the blue, Dares of Eternity blesses me with an extended barrel and projection fuse roll with a stability masterwork and under pressure. Yeah, it's an unfortunate backup plan in the fourth column, but honestly, doesn't even matter. This thing is insane. I actually threw it in the vault without even trying it out first and just recently brought it out for this video and oh man. What was I thinking? Hollow Words feels amazing. Is it just that I got under pressure and some nice range? Was extended barrel bringing my recoil direction to a nice 85 the key? Then it hit me. This fusion has 18 zoom. How did I miss that? 
For so many seasons, this thing has been right under my nose. 18 zoom is the highest of any precision frame fusion rifle available. Granted, as I discussed in the Epicurean section, any of these fusions with rangefinder is going to hit further than this 18 zoom, but still, at base, this is a great fusion rifle. It shows in the game too, under pressure on top of that crispy 18 zoom was the definition of a sticky fusion rifle. I am so impressed. Now, the slight negative. There is nothing impressive to add to it. It's just a basic, really solid fusion rifle. We don't have any of the fancy successful warm-up combos that the new fusion rifles have. There's really nothing in the fourth column to make it stand out in any sort of way. It's just a very solid, slightly further reaching fusion rifle. And for that, I'm going to rank it a little higher than some of the other solid fusion rifles out there that do have fancy perk combos. I'm telling you, I'm really impressed at how easy it is to use and how consistent it was in testing. Now, all that said, we already talked about how the Epicurean does this same thing, but even better. Plus, you have a direct path of getting Epicurean, whereas Hollow Words is complete dares of eternity RNG. So we're putting this right in the middle of the A category for a very standard fusion rifle, but only number 11 out of all 22 fusion rifles in Destiny 2. Iota Draconis, the solar high impact fusion rifle that can now be found in the dares of eternity loot pool. This one is so funny because I truly do not care for it with its long charge time and lack of charge time perks outside of Kickstart, but it has one secret among high end players that I find fascinating. It is a silent, Recharger. I had no idea because I just didn't play against that many IOTA Draconis users, but IOTA has a pre-charge sound that is really difficult for other players to hear depending on their audio system. That's a huge advantage to IOTA because the charge time is definitely its greatest weakness. Zerg sold a really solid roll a few months ago with arrowhead break to control the recoil direction and projection fuse for more range to use under pressure with. Then it had high impact reserves to counter out the charge time masterwork. It's honestly a five out of five roll that hits really hard. If you can manage the charge time, it's almost a guarantee if you're gonna secure the kill. But there's the problem we keep coming back to. High impacts at the high end of the crucible, it's just really difficult to make that work. And in turn, there's so many other options. There are also no charge time perks outside of Kickstart, and there are no perks to increase your range further than faster firing fusion rifles. Yeah, the silent charge time is cool, but it's still a nearly one second charge time. Have you ever tried taking on two highly skilled opponents at the same time with a high impact? Yeah, I can't emphasize that enough here. There is one high impact fusion rifle that will reconcile this problem, but for Iota Draconis, I'm placing it in the B tier and ranking it number 17 out of all 22 fusion rifles available due to its lack of range and charge time perks compared to other options. Likely suspect, oh how the mighty have fallen. This craftable void rapid fire fusion rifle from the Witch Queen expansion might be the greatest fall from the top out of any fusion rifle to exist in Destiny 2. If you're thinking Arantel was a hard fall, think again, because the right roll on that can still hit a one burst 50 meter kill in a Lunar Rift. Likely Suspect, on the other hand, ain't doing a thing in this meta. In its Witch Queen introduction, the most recent fusion rifle range nerf had not come yet, and rapid fire frames were firing faster and hitting harder, with only 7 bolts to kill against any resilience level. It was also the introduction of successful warmup, and back then, it allowed a rapid fire frame to fire a burst off with a ridiculous 288 millisecond charge time. So combine those two things and you're slaying out with about a 0.5 second TTK against anyone within 17 meters. Oh yeah, and ammo. Special ammo was everywhere, so successful warmup was running wild. Then the range nerf, charge time nerf, damage nerf, and ammo nerf all hit at the same time and rapid fire frame fusion rifles seemingly turn to dust. Likely suspect may be able to stack a little bit of range, but it lacks high impact reserves, an essential for regaining the seven bolt kill at higher resilience levels. The range nerf hurts too, as you're now limited to a max of about 15 meters, putting you scary close to slug shotgun range. That doesn't sound terrible until you realize that the nerf firmly planted pales in comparison to under pressure you can find on other rapid frame fusion rifles. Your shots frequently do not connect, and that gap of a few meters is quickly closed to end your streak. Oh, streak? What streak? You only had two shots. You're not using successful warmup to really do anything special anymore. You need both those shots to secure a clean kill so you can pretty much forget about successful warmup on rapid fire fusions. And that's about the end of the story for Likely Suspect. 
If you decide to run it, I suggest Golden Tricorn over anything else in that column as the 7 seconds of 15% extra damage will help you secure those 7 bolt kills with more ease, but it's still just not a great fusion. In fact, it's a bad fusion, one of the worst. I'm putting Likely Suspect in the C tier for can't make me, no thank you, I refuse, and I'm ranking it number 20 out of all 22 fusion rifles currently available. What? A fall indeed. Okay, it's time. Zer's ingredient. Oh, I'm sorry. Main ingredient. The famed, the one and only. Well, not even one and only since we had two god rolls Zer ingredients given to us. I still can't believe that was complete RNG, but the devs have confirmed it was. So what makes it so very good? Other than the fact that it was god rolled RNG just handed to the entire Destiny 2 population. Main ingredient is a very solid fusion rifle, above average right off the bat, giving us scope options with 17 zoom. Now many of the precision frame fusion rifles have high zoom, but none of them other than this one have perk columns that allow for double accuracy perks. With under pressure and firmly planted in the third column and tap the trigger in the fourth, Bungie created a bolt controlling machine that refuses to shoot anything but laser beams. What's crazy is that this is not even the craziest roll possible. Zer's ingredients, the rolls with double accuracy perks ending on tap the trigger, have been the easiest fusion rifles to control for the Destiny community as a whole. For good reason, very few fusion rifles offer such combos. And it's important on a precision frame in particular because precision frames do not lack damage or consistency. They will 5 bolt any resilience level at base, and they do not need high impact reserves in that fourth column. There are other fusion rifles that have been able to roll double accuracy perks like Trinary System or the Dream Breaker, which we talked about earlier, but those fusions need high impact reserves due to their archetype. Main ingredient doesn't. So it's the perfect storm of oops all accuracy when there's no detriment to rolling it that way. So it's clear, main ingredient is good, it's not a hoax. It's an amazing fusion rifle. Thing is, people are set on the wrong roll because of what they're used to. I would place my rangefinder epicurean against Zer's ingredient any day. It simply feels amazing and hits further than Zer's ingredient will, but main ingredient has more to offer than just Zer's rolls. For those willing to dare eternity, there could be an under pressure rangefinder roll waiting for you. What a cursed combo. In the best way, main ingredient can already roll that 17 zoom scope, so rangefinder takes that 1.34 times magnification and boosts it up to 1.474 times. That's essentially 23.75 zoom. This outclasses, well, everything. Everything that's not sunset at least. Out of all the god rolls I'm going to talk about today, this is the single one I do not have. Dares of Eternity just won't give it to me, which is unfortunate because it is the furthest hitting non-sunset fusion rifle in the game and I would very much like to have it. That said, please Zer, do not sell this roll. It would actually break the Crucible to have more than just a few running around with it. So all that said, I'm judging main ingredient on the actual under pressure and rangefinder roll, not the Zer ingredient you all know. That is a good fusion, but I'm not even sure it would make my top 10. A main ingredient with rangefinder, however, easily breaks into the S tier category and I'm ranking it number three out of all 22 fusion rifles. It was tough for me to put it there as I love my Epicurean and I've had lots of people that use rangefinder on both say they like the Epicurean more. So it's a really close line here. For some, Epicurean will appeal more, but the stats don't lie and a 17 zoom rangefinder main ingredient will just hit further. Simple as that. Mid is Reckoning, the high impact arc fusion rifle from the King's Fall raid. This is the second craftable raid fusion rifle, and this one comes with the most interesting perks out of anything on the list. Combos that don't exist on any other fusion rifle and absolutely break the mold for what you'd expect out of a high impact fusion rifle. I honestly cannot believe that more people aren't running Midas. I did a whole review breaking down my original thoughts and I knew it was going to land high on the list, but revisiting it has just further confirmed those feelings. Mita's Reckoning is a monster. As we went over with the Arvindale World Drop Fusion, high impacts take 3 bolts to kill at most resiliences, but require 4 bolts to kill at max 10 resil. So basically, you'll be required to land 4 bolts a lot of the time anyways. Mita's Reckoning rolls a backup plan. Backup plan just makes it to where you need the same 4 bolts to kill no matter the resilience level, but you fire 30% faster. That's a huge deal for a slow high impact fusion rifle. You're firing nearly as fast as an adaptive frame fusion rifle. 
Now, other high-impact fusion rifles can do this too. The Wizen Rebuke and Old Glacioclasm, even old Arantels could have this. What makes Mid as special is it's the first fusion rifle to get backup plan in the third column, which opens up the door to running successful warm-up in the fourth column at the same time. Mita's Reckoning essentially solves the high impact charge time problem. Backup plan gives you 30% faster bursts and then successful warm up gives you 37% faster bursts after that. Usually you're dead in the water after using your backup plan high impact fusion rifle because your next shot will be the normal charge rate at nearly one full second. Successful warm-up allows you to keep going at an even faster charge time. Plus, you'll be back up to your normal 3-bolt kills while you do it. It's just an insane combo that doesn't exist on any other fusion rifle, and I can't believe more people aren't running it. It mentally strains me, knowing people prefer Iota, Arvindil, Wizen, and Glacioclasm over this fusion, when they can't even come close on a competitive level. Now, of course, I understand. There are things with Glacio. Wizen has an origin trait. There are reasons, but if you haven't tried this combo and you like high impact fusion rifles, you are missing out. The chaining potential is off the chain. I'm placing Meta's Reckoning as the only high impact fusion rifle in the S tier. It stands alone among its peers with its speed capabilities, and I'm ranking it number five out of all 22 fusion rifles obtainable in Destiny 2. No Composure, the void rapid fire fusion rifle that most players gravitated towards when rapid fire frames were first buffed to 9 bolts. It was really popular in the Crucible, topping the charts higher than the Cartesian coordinate which I will never forgive any of you for. Why did y'all do this? No Composure is and always has been a mediocre fusion rifle. Well, I take it back, it was a mediocre fusion rifle, it is now a bad fusion rifle. Available from collections, No Composure has high impact reserves to help with its bolts to kill at higher resiliences. And it even has 16 zoom as opposed to the standard 15, but its set perks lack barrels to give it better recoil direction control, and more importantly for rapid fire frames, the fusion lacks accuracy perks like firmly planted, under pressure, or tap the trigger to control its 9 bolts. This straight up makes Null Composure worse than nearly any other fusion rifle. It's one thing to control lower stability by compensating with your aim, but without accuracy, the 9 bolts streaming out of a rapid fire will frequently just not go where you want them to. The more I think about it, the crazier it is that this was at the top of fusions during Season 15 when Cartesian Coordinate was dropping left and right for everyone. It's clear this was because of how accessible the weapon was at the time, but some of the other options are in an entirely different league and my ranking is going to reflect that. I will say that even without the accuracy bump, the 16 zoom and high impact reserves allow no composure to pass up likely suspect by just a smidge. It feels slightly more consistent, and so I'm placing no composure at the very bottom of the B tier. It came really close to C, but it's usable enough to be labeled B for boring over C for can't trust it. Overall, I'm ranking it number 19 out of the 22 fusion rifles currently available. Just above likely suspect. The Nightfall Fusion Rifle, Plug 1. Plug 1.1? One one? Yes, the precision frame arc fusion rifle that will be available for legacy focusing in Lightfall. While you won't be able to obtain the Adept version for a bit, I'm still going to rank it with the Adept in mind because of how quickly these weapons are rotated back in and how popular the weapon has been in the usage charts. Plug 1 is special, and I don't just mean in terms of its 17 zoom, high aim assist, amazing 75 recoil direction, and decent range and stability stats, I mean that it's special because out of all its revamps, it has never lost any good perks. Most other fusion rifles that have their perks change lose the strongest things that they have going for them. Wizen Rebuke and Dreambreaker lost Rangefinder, Glacioclasm lost Backup Plan, Epicurean lost both Tap the Trigger and Under Pressure, but Plug One continues to roll everything good it has always had. Under Pressure, Heating Up, Killing Wind, and Kickstart. Not only that, it's also added new fusion rifle perks like Successful Warm Up to keep it competing with the current options. I think these two things combined is what makes Plug One so amazing. On paper, Deliverance is the best comparison for Plug One since they are the only two adept precision frames available, and the stats are so similar. They can both slot an adept charge time mod, which lets you fire a little faster without losing any damage, and they can both roll successful warm up, which is amazing on precision frame fusion rifles specifically because they will one burst in 5 bolts no matter the resilience level of your opponent. 
Plug One does fall short on most stats with Deliverance delivering just a bit more range stability and aim assist, and that's where the pros for Deliverance will end. Plug One has 17 zoom scopes, where Deliverance only has a max of 16 zoom. Then on top of that, Plug One has an amazing third column of perks, which includes Under Pressure, the only accuracy perk to not be nerfed by Bungie, and that they recently said they have no intention of nerfing despite Tap the Trigger and Firmly Planted both getting Fusion Rifle specific nerfs. So Plug One is stacked, being the only adept precision frame fusion rifle to have the ability to roll both under pressure and successful warmup. Killing Wind and successful warmup is another amazing combo, giving you a huge stat boost and allowing you to hit your successful warmup shot slightly further. You could even combine under pressure and kickstart with a charge time masterwork, accelerated coils, and the adept charge time mod to achieve a 529 millisecond charge time. With an accuracy boost from under pressure, all while maintaining the 5 bolt kill at every resilience level thanks to the 20% buff from Kickstart. That's nearly as fast as a rapid fire frame, the fastest archetype, but with the damage of a precision frame 5 bolt kill. I've seen it out in the wild and have been absolutely wrecked by it. So plug one is out of this world. When you compare all those options and then look back at Deliverance, you realize it doesn't have a shot. The only accuracy perk Deliverance can use from the get go is tap the trigger and it's tied up in the fourth column where successful warmup is. Accuracy, speed, consistency. The plug one nearly has it all. It can compete at the highest levels, but the one place it falls short is range. I want y'all to hear me out though, because even there it doesn't fall that short. If it weren't for the mere existence of rangefinder on fusion rifles, I think that plug one could rise to be one of the very best among its peers. But as they lay now, you're not going to see as many 20 meter kills on plug one as you will on some of the other top fusion rifles. That said, it is still a fantastic fusion rifle that clearly belongs near the top of the A tier and I'm ranking it number 10 out of all 20 two fusion rifles currently available. Oh no, Bungie, not another one. And not another one. Another Riptide. Well, it better be the lead from gold chill clip roll I've been chasing for Lightfall because there is no other reason to keep a Riptide. This stasis rapid fire fusion rifle is good for one thing outside of PVE, making vault space. You're going to tell me that out of 24 fusion rifle perks between two different columns containing 12 perks each, there is only one perk? that I am interested in on a rapid fire fusion rifle? What the f bungee? This gun drops from the crucible, but y'all, it's a PVE weapon. There is no reason whatsoever for you to ever use this gun in the crucible. Yes, you can get under pressure just like the Cartesian coordinate. And yes, that's enough on that weapon to make it one of the most powerful guns in the game. But Cartesian has 17 zoom and 60 aim assist. Riptide has 31. Riptide doesn't just have the lowest aim assist out of all the rapid fire frames, it has the lowest aim assist of any fusion rifle in the entire game. Combine that with its low stability, low range, and low zoom of 15, and there is nothing here. There is no reason for you to ever run this in a competitive environment within the Crucible. I tried, y'all, I tried to make this work. I ran Radiant to use less bolts to kill at higher resiliences. I ran Golden Tricorn for the 15% damage buff that lasts for 7 seconds to help get those one shots, but it is not good. It is actively bad, and there is nothing you can do to salvage it. There is zero reason to ever run a Riptide in the Crucible, and if I ever hear a single person ask me about their PvP Riptide role, my response will be delete it before you can even tell me what your role is. This is a PvE gun. And that's fine. I think it's great to have weapons that are amazing in PvE and that suck in PvP. It doesn't have to do everything. I'm ranking it C for can't you see this is for PvE and I'm ranking it number 21 out of all 22 fusion rifles in the entire game. Get rid of it, clean your vaults. The only thing worse is a horizontal fusion rifle and I'd even keep one of those over Riptide just for the abnormal nature of the archetype. On to Snorri, or as I like to call it, main ingredient light. This void precision frame fusion rifle is one of the most recent world drop additions to Destiny 2 and I'm really glad it was added to the game. It's not what I'm personally going to end up using, but it's just a solid basic fusion rifle that gives players a good feel for what using a fusion rifle is like. Isn't that perfect for a world drop? It's got 17 zoom just like main ingredient can get to and it's got some of the best range and stability stats in the game for precision frames. 
Very comparable to Deliverance in terms of feel and even topping it a little bit with the one extra zoom stat. So if you're a Snorri lover, you have a right to feel that way. However, it is a bit of a beginner mode fusion rifle due to two things. First, it's lack of perks that could take it to the next level. And second, it's lack of an adept version. Precision frames are all easy to use thanks to their five bolt kills at base and their intrinsic ability to have a more vertical recoil pattern. So they have to have something to push them over the top of the other fusions in their category. Snorri has an accuracy perk in the third column and the prize speed perk successful warm up in the fourth, but many of the precision frames we've already talked about have successful warm up. And Firmly Planted is much more limiting than a perk like Under Pressure would be. Don't get me wrong, it's good. Snorri is a good fusion rifle, but both Deliverance and Plug One have adept versions they can use to push successful warm up even faster with an adept charge time mod and not lose any damage for the five bolt. Then on the flip side, for ease of use and accuracy, main ingredient can still roll double accuracy perks. Firmly planted and tap the trigger, or even under pressure and tap the trigger. Then for range, while Snorri does have a good range stat and 17 zoom, it is completely outclassed by range finder on an Epicurean or main ingredient. Snorri does fine at all these things, but it doesn't excel at any of it. It doesn't stand out, and I'm placing it at the top of the B for boring category and ranking it number 16 out of all 22 fusion rifles in Destiny 2. You'll notice this is just below where I rank Dreambreaker, and this is intentional. I ripped on Dreambreaker a bit for how frustrating the perk lineup has been changed, but even with that, I wanted to show how a bottom of the line adaptive frame is still better than a basic precision frame. Adaptives are great right now, outslaying everything but rapid fire frames while maintaining good to outright disgusting range for competing with precisions and high impacts. I hope that feeling has been conveyed throughout this video and it's the perfect segue into the next fusion. My favorite fusion rifle in all of Destiny 2 and I'm about to blow someone's mind. Tekion Force, the adaptive frame arc fusion rifle from the last Wish Raid. This is the only adaptive fusion rifle in the entire game that can roll Rangefinder. Not only can it roll Rangefinder, it can roll the coveted main ingredient combo of under pressure Rangefinder, allowing you to hit 20 meter kills 120 milliseconds faster than any other fusion rifle can. 40 meters in a Lunar Rift if you roll that way. After being slept on since the fall of Arintel, I theory crafted that Rangefinder would push this thing to the top and after seven full days of farming Cali with one minute to go before reset, I had a Tekian force drop. Oh, I got one. No way. If the, if I get the last one before reset and it's actually something good. Holy! I fell out of my chair. I cannot believe I got it. Under pressure, range finder, and it does not no disappoint. Way. I didn't think anything could pry Burden of Guilt from my Fusion Crutch hands, but Tekion is out of this world. I even feel fine running it with accelerated coils and no high impact reserves because you can forget about the 5 bolt, I'm hitting 7 every time. And at the 20 meter mark, the amount of damage fall off you're dealing with makes it to where you need to hit all 7 bolts no matter what, so it's a fine trade off. That's something to consider as you evaluate your fusion rifles and your playstyle. It's not always about the lowest bolt kill or consistency for what resilience you'll be facing. It's about your goals for the distances and speed you want to use your fusion rifle. For me, it comes down to furthest at the fastest. And so this fits perfectly into that theme. I'm taking the bet on myself. The bet that I'm going to land all seven bolts, and I'm betting on a weapon that can do it faster than you can even get your shot off. It is jaw dropping, and nothing has brought me more success with that playstyle than a perfectly rolled Tekion Force. I'm placing it at the very top of the S tier and ranking it the number one fusion rifle currently available in Destiny 2. Curse the day this becomes a craftable raid weapon with Rangefinder, because it would single handedly get Rangefinder nerfed again. In fact, I expect Bungie to take Rangefinder off of the perk list when it becomes craftable, and this is why I went to farm it now, rather than waiting for a craftable version to come. Okay, a few things about where this one lands because there is no one fusion rifle that does absolutely everything better. There is a give and take between the top four that I've already talked about, Tekion Force, Burden of Guilt, Main Ingredient, and the Epicurean. Main Ingredient and Epicurean will both get kills slightly past the range of Tekion Force, but for my playstyle, Tekion Force has the speed for me to compete at the level that I want to while maintaining up to 20 meters. 
Burden of Guilt was really difficult to rank lower than Tekium because it has high impact reserves, which does make it slightly more consistent in the closer ranges. Burden doesn't even need under pressure for it to feel really solid, it just connects all those bolts and has great options for last man standing with its alacrity perk. It's a really, really tough call, and I'm glad one is in the kinetic slot and the other one in the energy slot because I love them both. At the end of the day, it comes down to that slight bit of extra range and betting on myself to hit it. Burden of Guilt doesn't have rangefinder for those super deep shots, and Tekion Force does. Wait, wait, isn't there another adaptive frame fusion rifle with some crazy zoom scopes? Ah uh, yes, Timeline's Vertex. This solar adaptive frame fusion rifle is the only non-sunset fusion rifle that rolls with scopes up to 21 zoom. Impulse MS3 is definitely the scope you want to give it that plus six zoom and plus 12 range, which brings its total zoom up to 21 heads and shoulders above anything else that is non-sunset. It also holds the best aim assist stat of any adaptive fusion rifle at 60, and has the chance to roll the deadly stability accuracy combo of firmly planted and elemental capacitor. So how in the world is this fusion not in the top four? I just went on a rant about how strong adaptives were, and with the higher zoom, surely this would be the best. This is a tricky one. Timelines is a good fusion, no doubt, and for some, will be one of their top five. The high zoom alone lets it hit some great distances. Firmly planted helps a bit with the accuracy, and elemental capacitor lets it become whatever the user wants it to be. You can add plus 20 stability if you run void, but I think most people love this fusion for its ability to shoot fast with the adaptive charge time, hit far with the zoom, and make it snappy with the plus 50 handling from arc elemental capacitor or snapshot. There really is no other fusion that has the snappy playstyle while maintaining the range and aim assist of 21 zoom. The thing is, there is a better fusion for almost everything you want here. If it's just the super high handling and you want to pack a punch really fast, the mid is reckoning combo we talked about with backup plan and successful warm up is so much more deadly. Backup plan gives you 100 handling, so it feels even better than this. Shoots just as fast and hits even harder. Burden of Guilt, same archetype, gets elemental capacitor in the third column. So you can get that same plus 50 handling, but also run high impact reserves in the fourth column. If you're going for range, Tekion is so much better with its rangefinder combo with Under Pressure. Under Pressure still gives its full effect, which by the way has always been the better pick, but Firmly Planted's benefits are halved for fusion rifles. To top it off, Tekion hits slightly further with its estimated 21.5 zoom thanks to rangefinder. This can all feel a little nitpicky, but when you add all the details together, it paints a full picture for how Timeline's Vertex just can't keep up. Just like all the other weapons, I brought my god roll out again to see if things have changed. Sometimes things on paper don't always line up with how it feels, but the results all felt the same as I expected them to. It's a good fusion, sometimes even hitting some surprising deep shots, but so many other fusions felt way more consistent with their accuracy lineup. I believe the reason this is stuck in people's heads is such a good fusion is because it was a fusion that dropped a ton when Forsaken first dropped, and it felt good so people have just always felt good about it. It is super rare to get a good Tekion, and some will never touch Raid or Trials of Osiris for Burden of Guild, so Timelines was just as good as it seemed they would get with its great base stats. But there are better alternatives, so I'll rank Timelines Vertex in the A category for a great fusion rifle, and I'll rank it number 14 out of all 22 fusion rifles, and I'll introduce you to something better, Trinary System. The adaptive solar frame fusion rifle that nearly has it all. No really, just like Riptide, Trinary System has 24 potential perks to roll. The difference is that there are a ton of great fusion rifle perks to grab in the potential roll. Firmly planted, under pressure, killing wind, hip fire grip, slide shot, tap the trigger, and high impact reserves. What an absolute monster. If only Riptide had this kind of selection. Trinary even has some of its best perks split between columns, so you can do the rare double accuracy perk combo that main ingredient gets, like under pressure and tap the trigger, or firmly planted and tap the trigger. You've even got high impact reserves in the fourth column, so you can roll an accuracy perk in the third, and high impact reserves in the fourth to basically make this adaptive frame fusion do precision frame damage. The stats aren't the absolute best in every category, but they are all on the higher end, with its range right up there next to Burden of Guilt, and its aim assist close to Timeline's Vertex. I also really like the recoil direction being right at that even 55 just like Burden of Guilt, 
so that if you grab a roll with extended barrel, you can raise it up to 65 and keep the recoil more vertical. The downside to this fusion is most definitely the standard 15 zoom. While it is similar to Burden of Guilt in so many ways, it is still an off-brand Burden of Guilt. Everything is just slightly less, and on a whole it makes Trinary System just not feel as competitive. I do like Trinary System, I like it just a step above Timeline's Vertex. Preferring under pressure on Trinary's over 21 zoom on Timelines feels insane, but after playing with both of them a whole lot and reevaluating all the different possibilities for various playstyles, I feel like Trinary System just comes out on top ever so slightly. Both of them are at the point at which my fusion rifle rankings go from basic good fusion rifles to great fusion rifles, so hear me when I say there is something here, but I'm still placing Trinary System in the A category for being a great fusion, and I'm ranking it number 13 out of all 22 fusion rifles, just above Timeline's Vertex. The Wizen Rebuke. Iron Banner's Arc High Impact Fusion Rifle is back for its third iteration. I can't believe we've had three versions of this thing already. In some ways, the Rise and Rebuke has been made obsolete by Mita's Reckoning. Mita's has the insane combo for high impact fusion rifles where you can use backup plan to fix your charge time and still four bolt the opponent and then run successful warm up for even faster and more powerful kills after your first elimination. The Wise and Rebuke has backup plan and it has successful warm up but it has them in the same column, so you can't run both of them at the same time. That said, Wizen does have under pressure in the third column, which is fantastic paired with either of the perks we just talked about. If you're going for just an initial strong burst for one kill and you don't plan on engaging more than one target at once, under pressure and backup plan is a fantastic combo. Even if you main primary weapons and you like saving your fusion to whip out when getting pushed, backup plan could be the best thing to possibly pair with your playstyle. I'm always surprised by just how consistent the weapon becomes with that roll and how hard it hits when you use it. The Wiser Rebuke stats aren't anything crazy one way or the other, but just having a high impact fusion rifle with under pressure makes it incredibly easy to use. Rolling it with successful warm up makes for a much much slower playstyle, as your first shot will be the full almost one second charge time, but the successive kills you get afterwards will be so easy and frankly a lot of fun. Killing with only 3 bolts up to 9 Brazil while maintaining a charge time faster than adaptive frame fusion. To top it all off, the Wiser Rebuke has the Iron Banner origin trait, Skulking Wolf. Skulking Wolf grants you 10 seconds of staying off the enemy's radar after getting a kill while low on health. 10 seconds is an insane amount of time in the Crucible, and it's a perk I feel I passed over too quickly when first going over this weapon, primarily because this is a high impact fusion rifle and while you're taking so long to get that voop off, you've probably incurred some damage in the process. What I really wish is that we would have been given Eye of the Storm on this fusion rifle to pair with Skulking Wolf, they would just go hand in hand, but I'm hopeful that we might see it on a future version of the gun. As it stands, Wizen is a solid high impact fusion. With the incredibly strong pairing of Under Pressure topped with a great origin trait for some amazing synergy. It's so strange to give such a slow firing fusion rifle at base such a high recommend, but it just remains strong, fast, and easy to use with the right perk setup. It doesn't break S tier because there is always some hoop left to jump through with this weapon. Either you have backup plan and your follow up shot is screwed, or you have successful warm up and your first shot is screwed, but it is a ridiculously accurate fusion rifle with some tricks up its sleeves. I'm putting it at the top of the A tier and I'm ranking it number 9 out of all 22 fusion rifles available in Destiny 2. Zealot's Reward. This is the anti fusion fusion, sharing the title only with Cartesian coordinate. Anytime you face someone giving you a hard time with a fusion rifle, Zealots is there to reliably fusion them first. Zealots Reward is a void rapid fire fusion rifle from Garden of Salvation. It's one of the slickest fusions out there. The sound design did an excellent job making this weapon just feel like you can outdraw anyone else in the game. On paper, it really shouldn't be that much better than even a Riptide, as the stats are nearly identical, but it just is. Some of this has to do with being able to roll both under pressure and high impact reserves together on a rapid fire, making sure you don't need as many bolts to connect at some of the higher resilience levels, but the rest of it is still a bit of a mystery to me. Like clearly, I like under pressure a lot, and rightfully so. It still gives its full benefits to fusion rifles, which makes sense why I like this fusion a lot more than Likely Suspect, which only has Firmly Planted, but why? Why does Zealots feel leagues above Riptide? It does not make any sense according to any visible stat we can see in the game other than the extra damage from high impact reserves. 
It has a decent cult following too. I started noticing them competing alongside Cartesian after the season 15 rapid fire frame buff, but even now, there are people who love their zealots rewards. I now feel a certain fear when I see one going into a trials match. A rapid fire fusion player that knows their max distance will play in that range and force you to make a mistake. It's scary stuff. They don't hit as far as many others on the list, maxing out at about 16 meters, but within those 16 meters, zealots is terrifying. They are relatively easy to farm from the Garden of Salvation raid too, so if you want a good anti-fusion fusion, go grind out the first encounter of that raid as there are only three things that drop from it. Plus, the perk pool is pretty small, so you've got some good odds of getting an under pressure high impact reserve roll. I do recommend Arrowhead Break and a Counterbalance mod, as controlling those bolts is essential, but that brings your recoil direction to a near perfect 94, and that plus an extra touch of stability will have you lasering opponents in the Crucible. This is the one fusion out of all the fusions I've talked about that I don't have math to back up where I'm ranking it. It makes sense for Cartesian to be in the S tier with its 17 zoom and ridiculously high aim assist, but this one is more of a leap of faith. It's just so terrifying to play against, I have to place it at the top of the A tier. It does an amazing job of connecting your bolts with under pressure and arrowhead break, and I don't have the problems that I have with Likely Suspect or Riptide. Clearly, as I'm placing Zealous Reward in the A tier, and I put Likely Suspect and Riptide in the C tier. What a jump. This is not an easy fusion to use by any means. I would put it right there with mid as Reckoning and Cartesian Coordinate for learned excellence, but if you master the distance and play to the strength of the speed, you will be heavily rewarded, especially when playing against other fusion rifle players. So I'm ranking it number 7 out of all 22 fusion rifles available in Destiny 2, potentially my most controversial pick yet. Okay, I feel like I've painted a really good picture of all the fusion rifles available to obtain in Destiny 2 heading into Lightfall. If you listen to the entire ranking, you now have an excellent understanding of how different these fusions are from one another and what makes the best truly the best. Let's talk about the best for a second. The whole S tier, the top 6 fusion rifles in Destiny 2. Cartesian Coordinate, Mid is Reckoning, Epicurean, Main Ingredient, Burden of Guilt, and Tekion Force. We've got one rapid fire, one high impact, two precisions, and then two adaptives. I wasn't attempting to give something for everyone, but it kind of ended up that way unintentionally. And each of these fusion rifles have something that makes them the best in their category. For the precisions, it's pure distance and accuracy. For Tekion Force, it's distance and speed with a touch of extra accuracy. For Burden of Guilt, it is speed and consistency. For mid is Reckoning, it is the power and accuracy of a high impact with the speed of an adaptive. And finally, for Cartesian Coordinate, it is the reverse, with the speed of a rapid fire and the aim assist of a high impact. You could become the scariest player in any Crucible lobby with a god roll from any of these fusion rifles. Looking at the rest of the fusion rifles, I want to emphasize that you can find true success with any of them from the B tier up. It's just that as you go down the list, you'll find that the fusions at the top do things further, faster, or easier. So by sticking with the fusions towards the bottom, you're likely either making things more difficult for no reason, missing out on insane ranges, or you're this close to finding greater potential in your PvP plays if you would just try something faster. So stretch yourself. Try something new. I rated main ingredient based on my rangefinder god roll, but if you're stuck on the Zer ingredient, I'd actually only place it in the A tier. There are so many things out there to stretch your abilities as a fusion rifle player. This has been LEGO Le Flash. I'll be covering all the new weapons in Lightfall, including any of the new fusions, of course. This in-depth tier list and fusion rifle ranking took weeks to gather rolls, test, script, record, and edit. So any new subscribe, like, or comment means the world to me. You can now find me as a co-host on the Destiny Community Podcast, as a host of the Destiny Massive Breakdowns Podcast, and I've got a Discord you can join if you'd like to be a part of future content or hunt for fusion rifles together, like we did for the Under Pressure Rangefinder Techian Force. Link is in the description. Thank you everyone for joining me on this one. Until next time, GG.